The word obsession encompasses the mindset of everyone at Mossy Oak. We obsess over hiding from, chasing, and conserving the critters we pursue. In this episode, Penhody Project's Dave Owens gives us insight into his obsession with the wild turkey. This is The Obsessed. My obsession with turkeys just kind of fell into place because turkeys being as vocal as they are, I've always had a knack for just hearing something and mimicking it. <laughs> Sitting down to one and having them answer you and, and kind of accepting you as, as one of them and, and having them uh, second guess their primary sense, you know, I mean, getting them to trust their ears over their eyes is uh, one of the biggest accomplishments to me, to, to uh, fool something that's hunted every day of its life. New day in a new state here. I am in Kentucky this morning. I don't have a specific point in time when I was like, you know what, turkey hunting's cool, I wanna do it. It was just something that I kind of wandered into from a hunting family. Nobody turkey hunted though, it was all deer hunting and rabbit hunting and that kind of stuff. And I guess that's why turkey hunting has always been a little bit more special to me than anything else because I was, I was self-taught. Anything that I learned was through a bunch of hunting forums on the internet and reading magazines and books and learned to kind of the ropes and then it was just a bunch of trial and error, which I think is the best recipe for success is, is learning it yourself. 322, Friday afternoon, we heading to Florida. Every year that I went and done it, I was always making sure that I could do it a little more and a little more and I put myself, you know, that's when I started traveling was in college because our spring break felt a little funny and uh, turkey season wasn't open back home so I had to go to South Florida, it was the only opener, only, you know, season opening and then it got to where you were looking for seasons that were open before and after your season so you could stay at home enjoy the whole season and then extend it on the front and the rear end and then i think that's when it really bit me at the possibilities that turkey hunting could provide everything just compounded from there you've got places that a lot of people go and they travel to these destinations to look at some extravagant landscape feature like the grand canyon or you know uh, mount rushmore and, and i was going and, and, and passing by those seeing parts of the country that that typical people wouldn't travel to. and Getting there and then finding an old familiar friend, because turkeys are turkeys no matter what part of the country you're in, but, and I guess the traveling aspect of it is when it really clicked that this stuff is, is something that I could see myself doing as much as I possibly can. Well, I'm trying to get to that little hilltop field that you just saw those turkeys in. Had some hens and a couple of longbeards there kind of saw us in that road and kind of started fading away, but the longbirds were gobbling again already, so I think like we really boogered it up. So what we're doing is falling off into this little hardwood drain and getting down and around them. As I was doing all of it and started traveling and experiencing all these different things and uh, the mobility became a real big uh, issue for me, wanting to be mobile, having the ability to find birds that want to work, I kind of fell into the to the techniques and the strategies that I use now, which is more of a knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them kind of situation. You gotta be aggressive sometimes, maybe more times than not, I'm over aggressive. But there's some times when you gotta pump the brakes and sit back and wait. And techniques that I use, strategy that it kind of fell into was I guess more of a traditional kind of turkey hunting to where you don't have a lot of tools and stuff. You just use uh, woodsmanship, learning the land, learning what the turkeys are gonna do regardless of where. Obviously, I prefer the hardwoods. I prefer the mountains. That's just what I'll cut my teeth with, running those fine ridges. That's what I, where I feel at home. But you're basically taking an animal that lives as paranoid as any animal alive. I mean, he's killed by everything from ants to black bears. When you can put your back against a tree or hide wherever you need to hide, and it's just you and him, and you're convincing him using his ears, which is his second line of defense to trust what it's hearing well enough to, to come into within gun range, exploit that little bit of weakness he has during those couple months a year. 
that's the most fulfilling way of killing one, in my opinion. When one dies, when, when, you, when he draws that last breath, I want to feel like that I have gotten everything that I could possibly get from him. Like he's given me every bit of exhilaration that he could have possibly given. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. God, they gobbled right there. My heart stopped. <laughs> that about worked perfect. What do you say? I'd say it worked out all right. No one want to hold them and no one want to fold them. And that's why I choose to hunt them like I do. I don't like taking shortcuts when it comes to taking one's life. I like knowing that I had to uh, make all the right decisions when it comes down to the setup, the right calls. I like like knowing that, that, that I give him as much of a chance as I could. I think I've already done a good enough job at this, but just in case I haven't, <clears throat> I'm gonna explain exactly what we did today that wound up with that turkey right there. Pinhoti Project at its core was just turkey hunters with a video camera. That was something that I think happened a lot in the, probably I guess it was the mid 80s, and there was content out there, VHS tapes, that uh, guys like myself, that's what I lived off of. That's what taught me how to turkey hunt. I didn't have anybody that was uh, a mentor, so to speak, when it came to turkey hunting specifically. So with the advancement and the changes in media and technology and where uh, people consumed their content, that type of instructional or just entertainment just kind of faded. It kind of uh, was diluted. And with the age of uh, the way digital media is produced now, everything had to get flashy and everything had to be clickbait. And I just saw that taking turkey hunting in a direction that, that, that didn't sit well with me, didn't sit well with the people around me. At first, I signed out of it and I thought, man, if that's the way it's gonna work, then it's just not for me. But we threw our hat in the ring and just started carrying a video camera and we made it pretty pretty blatant right from the beginning that we were just turkey hunters with a video camera. We cared nothing about you know, cinematography. You weren't gonna get time-lapse footage. It wasn't gonna be fancy. Um, very little kill shots. You weren't gonna watch turkeys strut and their snood stand up in slow motion. That wasn't the kind of content we were gonna provide. But what we hoped to provide was entertainment for just normal guys, regular guys, that stuff that I was able to find and I was able to sink my teeth into when, when I was coming up. Guys, I hope, I hope I got that well enough. If I didn't, I got something. And what the Penhody Project is about is turkey hunters taking video cameras, not turkey hunters being videoed by videographers, because we do not claim to be videographers. We're gonna be a couple turkey hunters that take a video camera and get what we can, show you what's real. That's where the Penhody Project kind of originated. It has blossomed into several different avenues, going down several different avenues since then, and uh, I'm proud of, of every dog on one of them. Life's upside down since turkey hunting walked into this picture, and unfortunately that was a long, long time ago. And gosh, what I could have if I had avoided turkey hunting somehow, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm the luckiest man in the world to get to hunt like I, like I do and uh, enjoy it for as many mornings as I do. So not that it would be the life for most folks because living out of the back of a truck, <laughs> living out of a cooler, bags under your eyes, uh, driving all hours of the night. I mean, that just ain't the life for most people. But for me, it's where I blend in. And I think the obsession he is that it's involuntary, like I can't not do it. I cannot not think about turkeys every day, whether it's helping them, getting close to them, listening to them, whatever it may be. I think that's what defines obsession is, is sincerely being involuntary. Like I cannot not think about them and not love them and not want to hunt them and not want to see them do better and, and just be consumed with, with everything that's got anything to do with it. My name is Dave Owens and I'm obsessed. <laughs>